Hi, I'm Peter Toscano, and one thing I really like about the Bible is it has no prohibitions about lesbians. It doesn't talk about lesbians in the Bible, and it doesn't condemn them. In all of the Hebrew scriptures, the Old Testament as some call it, they don't mention lesbianism. All of the prohibitions that seem to be there have to do with man-on-man -man action. And it's called an abomination with a bunch of other stuff that we don't think of as abominations today, including that poly cotton blend shirt you're wearing. Now, in the Christian scriptures, it also has nothing to say about a couple like my dear friends, Christine and Teresa. Their committed relationship with each other, their love together, even their physical intimacy. It's not mentioned at all in the Christian scriptures. And I know what you're thinking. Oh, but what about St. Paul in Romans chapter 1? Oh, yeah, yeah, Romans chapter 1. Yeah, St. Paul lists a bunch of sins in there that like are problematic, like backbiting and gossiping, judging is the big thing, judging other people, uh, disobeying your parents. And there is this section about people worshiping false gods and, and worshiping animals and people having sex with each other, men with men and women with women, which sounds gay, right? you would think. But you know, Paul is not talking about what's going on in Christine and Teresa's house, or my house with my own partner, Glenn. See, back in those days, there were lots of gods. There still are in the world today. And, and, and there were just like so many gods in so little time. And worshiping certain gods was very, very popular because it wasn't like boring going to church. It was like worshiping at a frat house. In fact, the parents would say, don't go to the temple on your way home. You'll get into trouble because they would be drunk off their asses, okay? And then there were sex workers there who kind of whipped things up into shape too and to worship the deities. And then before you knew it, like dudes were kissing dudes and they could be straight, they be, could be gay, you don't know. And women with women and people having sex and like touching the, each other's bits and all kinds of stuff happening. And then sometimes people would be having sex with someone they didn't even know who they were having sex with because people came in costume. So you can be like hooking up with this person in this camel suit and like not realize that you're actually doing your grandma Ew. So you see why Paul was concerned about these practices and condemned them. And, 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 and again, I, I don't think my friends Christine and Teresa have anything to worry about about their gay lifestyle or my gay lifestyle. Oh yes, I hear you. Critic, I hear you. Uh, but but St. Paul in other places does condemn homosexuality, homosexual behavior. Well, you know, there are these other passages, and there are theologians uh, who have picked them apart and said, well, this Greek word actually means this, and it's talking about pederasty and not actually too committed adult men in a relationship. There's lots of ways of breaking down these passages, but you know what? You may be right. You may be correct that Paul condemns gays, condemns us to hell. But you know what? Paul also silenced women in church, and Paul upheld the institution of slavery, humans owning humans for their own gain. And I don't agree with Paul on those matters. And with his attitudes about gays, then I don't agree with him either. Now, should you see me in the Temple Diana, dressed up in a fabulous otter costume, hooking up with someone dressed like a zebra, will totally pull out Romans chapter one and like rip into me. But otherwise, you can just back off.